Chapter 2, Part 1 It is written, Thou shalt inquire, and seek out, and ask diligently. It followeth therefore, that of the true prophet thou shalt also inquire, and seek out, and ask diligently. And this I do likewise, your companion in thought, Judah the man of Kiriot. I follow in the footsteps of my rabbi, and I sit at his feet, and I measure every word, and I seek out closely all his acts, and I have found no evil in him, but his heart is at peace with his God, and whatsoever he thinketh and saith is in God's ways. As it is written, Ye shall follow the Lord your God, ye shall fear him and obey his commandments, ye shall hearken unto his voice and cleave to him. And as I have in part related unto you, our rabbi called together a great multitude of people on a hill that is outside the city, and declared unto them the laws and commandments which they shall follow, that they might be called the children of God, and have their portion in the kingdom of heaven. Many scribes and learned men came likewise to hear the words of my rabbi. They came from Migdal, and from the great city of Sepphoris, and even from the city of Nahum, which had a great name because of its scholars, and there came thence Simon the Pharisee, and many other Pharisees, also Hananiah the potter, and Hanan the tanner, and Rabbi Jonah the tent weaver, and the disciples of Yochanan, whom they call the Baptist, with all the learned men and scribes of Kephar Nahum, and a great multitude was gathered at the hill. And my rabbi, Yeshua ben Joseph, who is of Nazareth, interpreted the law for them, and brought their hearts nigher unto their Father in heaven. The rabbis and the learned men were greatly comforted by his words, and they were cleansed of all the doubts which they had carried in their hearts concerning our rabbi. They perceived that he walketh in God's ways, and whatsoever he doeth is for the sake of God. And ye shall know that in many things my rabbi followeth after the house of Shammai, that he maketh heavier the law, and doeth after the manner of the rabbis who build one fence behind another about the heavenly garden. This he doeth in all things pertaining to man and wife, and maketh the law exceedingly severe. For he hath even set at naught the writing of divorcement, saying that this was given unto us by Moses only because of the hardness of our hearts, and in this matter the rabbis were not of one mind. But they considered it thus, that this was the custom of the Hasidians, with whom my rabbi sojourned, what time he learned the word of God from Rabbi Yochanan the Baptist. For it is known that some of them are so exact in the laws of purity that they have destroyed the commandment to be fruitful and multiply, and do not take or give in marriage, for which reason they have been called crazed Hasidians by our sages. But the doubt which the rabbis had in their hearts because of this matter was altogether removed by his great uprightness and simplicity, and because of the exceeding faith which he hath in our Father in heaven. For his faith in the Lord of the world is beyond all knowing, as King David, peace be upon him, hath said, The Lord is my rock, Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. And even as Moses our teacher hath commanded us, even so he bids us be children of our Father in heaven, and we shall cling to the deeds of God, and as he is compassionate and gracious, and sendeth his Son to shine on the good and the wicked, and letteth his rain fall on the just and the unjust, so shall we too love our enemies, bless those that curse us, and pray for those that persecute us. Who hath heard such righteousness heretofore? He hath bidden us be like the angels of heaven, and like the children of this earth. And even when he touched the honor of the Pharisees, saying, If your righteousness be not greater than the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall surely not enter the kingdom of heaven. 
they all forgave him, for he did speak but of the false Pharisees, whose deeds are like those of Zimri, and who demand payment like Phineas, and who make a great show of their piety. For he standeth, like the Pharisees, on the law, and hath oft repeated, Till the heavens and the earth shall pass away, there shall not be destroyed one jot or tittle of the law. And in many things he lighteneth the law, as in others he maketh it heavier. But the chiefest thing with him is goodness of heart. And he teacheth the whole law according to the sage Hillel, that it is between a man and his neighbor. That which thou wouldst not have another do unto thee, that thou shalt not do unto him. For that is the chief thing. As to that which concerneth a man and God, it shall be done modestly and in secret, and observed of no one. When thou fastest, anoint thy head, and wash thy face, that men may not mark that thou fastest, but thy Father in heaven, who seeth it secretly, shall reward thee openly. Happy is the mouth that has spoken these words, happy are the ears that have heard them. Happy is Israel that it possesseth a teacher and prophet, who hath arisen in our day to lead us back to our Father in heaven. But I shall not dwell at length on his doctrine, for I have caused his words to be written down as he spoke them by Hananiah the scribe, whence ye shall see that the heart of my rabbi is at peace with God. But this I would have you know, that in the midst of his speaking there came to him all the wise men and the learned men and the scribes to do him honor, according to the law concerning a great teacher, and to inquire of his peace. And we, his disciples, who sit at his feet and drink his words, were mightily exalted also with his greatness, and a portion of his honor fell upon us. And Rabbi Simon the Pharisee, and all the scribes and sages of Nahum which were with him, entreated our Rabbi to go with them to the city of Nahum, and to teach there, and spread the waters of his learning, and to come with them under one roof, and break bread with them, and this our rabbi promised to do. And they departed from our rabbi with great love, for they are of one spirit with him. And Rabbi Simon the Pharisee, and the learned men that were with him, turned back to their own city. And it came to pass, when our rabbi came down from the hill, where he had preached the word of God, and was preparing to return to the city, that a great multitude surrounded him, and went with him to the house of Simon the fisher, where he lived. And there were many sick, and such as were possessed with evil spirits, and there were sundry other sick persons, waiting for him at the house of Simon, having heard of his miracles, and they stretched out their arms to him, crying, Hosanna, help us! And the number of the sick and the possessed increased, and he could not go forward, for they surrounded him like a sea, which cast up its waves at his feet. For there were very many poor people, and many afflicted with sorrows, who had come to Kafar Nahum, having heard of his wonderful deeds. And his heart was filled with pity for the pain of so many people, and many of them he healed, and he comforted many of them, so that he grew weak with much speaking. And he could not, because of the multitude of the people, go apart to rest, or to pray in silence, or even to eat his bread in peace, for they would not leave him. Then Simon the fisher bore him away from the people, and brought him to the shore of Gennesaret, where his boat lay." We, his disciples, were with him on the ship, and he said the evening prayer with us, and ate the evening meal with us. Then Simon laid him on the floor of the boat, and covered him with his cloak from the coolness of the night. And our rabbi rested that night, like a day laborer after the day's labor, and we, his disciples, sat about him, and guarded his breath in the deepness of the night." Then, when the morning star showed itself, our rabbi arose from sleep, and Simon conducted us to a field of olive trees, which they called the Field of the King, because it was of the government, and it was on the shore of the lake. 
and we did the morning ablution in the lake Gennesaret, and we said the morning prayer, and the disciples took out their bread from their bundles, and after they had prayed, they ate the morning meal. And the way of our rabbi is on this wise. He is not like other learned men who stay within the four L's of their commandments and preach the law in the study houses to their disciples who sit at their feet. But he is like a brimming well which standeth at the wayside so that all who pass may come and draw of its living waters. My rabbi goeth about among the common people and guideth them into the right path. In the weekdays he goeth out to the port, where the fishers bring in the nets with the fish, and the porters carry their burdens to the ships. Many folk are assembled there, for they come hither to sell the merchants the labor of their hands. And our rabbi standeth there among the folk, and teacheth them of the kingdom of heaven through beautiful parables. And this one he comforteth with a word, and the other he healeth of a sickness." On the Sabbath he cometh to the synagogue, and sometimes he preacheth on a text from the Torah, and sometimes he doth not so. But the rabbi spreadeth his doctrine not only in the city of Capharnaum, but he leadeth us through the towns and villages round about, and he showeth us how the modest people live, and biddeth us take their example." Oft times it chanceth that as we come to a city, the eventide encountereth us, and the sky encloseth the earth in faint, and from the houses goeth up smoke, where the bread is a baking which labor hath earned. Then the man cometh home from the field, or from his work to the house, and the good wife waiteth at the door with the lamp in her hand on the threshold of the house. And when the rabbi cometh to the city, he goeth not to the house of study to the learned, but he turneth aside to the houses of the poor, and he stationeth himself at a door, till that they bid him enter. He bringeth peace with him, he blesseth the house, and sitteth with the folk to eat the bread of the poor, and saith a benediction thereon, and praiseth the good wife to the husband. And when they have eaten, he calleth the children to him, and inquireth of them concerning their lessons, and every child telleth him his text. Then he blesseth the children, and saith, May your like multiply in Israel. And the mothers sit on the thresholds of the doors, and when they hear that the rabbi praiseth the fruit of their womb, and maketh them beloved of their husbands, so they say to each other, It cannot be but that this is a man of God, for he bringeth peace with him into the house. Then he sitteth late into the night with the men, and questioneth them concerning their business. He knoweth that which causeth them concern, and their needs are nigh to him. And for one he healeth the body with a remedy, and the other he giveth a good word for his soul." And he comforteth them all, and declareth unto them that salvation is nigh. The gates of the kingdom of heaven are open to give entrance to all that are ready, and he maketh his speech fair with parables and beautiful words. And we lodge in the night with these folk, in one bed, upon one mattress, not as the learned do, which consider the bed of the man of the earth unclean. And in the morning he betaketh himself with the people to the field, and sometimes he helpeth them at their work, and sometimes he thanketh them only with a blessing for the bread and lodging. And when we come a second time unto this place, then the folk come of themselves to welcome us, and the women stand on the thresholds of their houses, and they call unto the rabbi, Let the rabbi stay with me. Let him lay his head under my roof, and let my house be blessed for his sake. And the children likewise run forth to greet him, and they make a circle about him, and they seize his robe, and they tell him the texts which they have learned that day in the school. And when we, the disciples, do sometimes speak angrily to the children, and bid them be gone from molesting the rabbi, he will not have it so, but saith unto us, Suffer the little ones to come unto me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And thus he goeth into the town, with the children all about him, and the men come forth to greet him, and they call unto him, 
Come, thou blessed of God. And when eventide cometh, he calleth them together in the house or the yard of one of them, and they come bearing their lamps. And the rabbi sitteth with them, and breaketh bread, and telleth them of the kingdom of heaven. And the people turn back to God, and the name of the rabbi spreadeth like an ointment through the land.